Hello everyone and welcome to a double duty edition of Tom Pop featuring Fat Man and Little Boy. This is our second review. My name is Stephen Corka. Hey cats and kittens, I'm Juan. Oh, look at you copying me, you fucking asshole. Fuck off. I just want people to realize how fucking stupid that sounds. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> Are you getting sick, dude? I'm getting Don't sick. Don't get me sick. I mean, well, because that sounds like a chest sick, like dude, by the time, lung sick, dude. By the time you get sick, it'll be Thursday and it'll be your day off. Oh, fucking thanks. <laughs> anyway, yeah, if we're not watching 18 fucking movies. I know, movies just keep coming out, I've don't seen they? three this week. I, two with you and one with my kids. Oh, my God. And, and we, this weekend, I'm we, probably going to see You told Pika me we're going to see Brightburn. And we're going to watch, and I'm going to watch Pikachu with my kids, though. Well, anyways, why are we here, guys? We're here to talk about the highly underrated the unfair review that's been given. We shouldn't even talk about Dark Phoenix. We should talk about why all the fucking idiots out there are like... People are talking mad shit about Dark Phoenix. We're talking about Dark Phoenix, guys. And people are talking so much shit about this movie. But let me say, this is one of the best X-Men movies I have ever seen in my entire life. Juan, would you agree? I agree. This movie... I, I oh, wait 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 we need we need to do something for this spoilers, movie. Spoilers guys. Hold on. Spoilers. We need to do something for this movie I feel. What is it? I think that you should give them your your nerd cred on your love for X-Men. <clears throat> oh, because a lot of the, I'm hearing stupid like today I, uh, today I'm, I'm not going to say it's stupid like people on try their opinion I heard like for instance that's uh, out of character for Nightcrawler. Ah. And and no right and stuff like that. So I I've known you basically we've known each other more than half our lives already. Two thirds. Like I've known you since you were almost a kid. Yeah. Um, you have always loved. So tell them how much you love X Men. Act the X Men franchise is easily one of my most favorite franchises in the comic books, TV shows, cartoons, movies. You fucking name it. I love the X Men. I've been reading them since the early '90s. So uh, Fatal Attractions. Onslaught, Savage Land. What's your Land. favorite comic book of all time? Uh, Age of Apocalypse. Yeah, I, I asked that because I knew <clears throat> that was the answer. Age of Apocalypse is amazing, which is why X Men Apocalypse, the previous movie to this m amazing movie, was dog shit. So, um, and you still read X Men? I still read X Men, even and sometimes it's painful. Yeah, but you but read through X Men Blue. Read, I did. You read through all Gold, that, Red, right. all that stuff. Red was good. Uh, and I I pushed through it because I am I am a true you, X Men you've seen fan. All the movies on release. I've seen all the movies. I've seen most of the TV shows. I didn't watch uh, the one that the one the that they can't. They, I didn't watch The Gifted, but uh, the X-Men animated series, amazing, like the Marvel equivalent to Batman animated series. So, and and, and um, honestly, the, the X-Men weren't the X-Men till the 80s, right? Till Claire, Chris Claremont took over the X-Men and, and blew it up. Uh, I think he took them over in the 70s, actually, because uh, he, he is the author of the Dark Phoenix saga and all that okay. stuff like that. Um, and I believe that was the seventies. Don't quote me on that, because which was great. But what would you e say either way, I wasn't reading it at the time. But but I did read the Dark Phoenix saga. <laughs> and sure. for you guys that don't know, here's the deal with it, guys. Take care. Here, here's the deal with Dark Phoenix saga. Obviously, Jean Grey goes to space uh, for some mission with the X Men, and uh, she gets hit with some shit. And the Phoenix, uh, the Phoenix Force comes inside of her she comes back to earth she's all powerful and ev everything is good she's doing missions she's got her new costume with the green and the phoenix emblem and all that and then the hellfire club kidnaps her with um with with emma frost and the white queen and sebastian shaw all people that we saw in x-men first class by the way that was the hellfire club in first mm -hmm. class uh so they weren't going to do that in this movie but the hellfire club kidnapped her and mastermind actually manipulated uh jean gray uh who became actually the black queen um and and manipulated her into thinking that she was actually a part of them she was a part of a family but then the phoenix force came out and her revealed the hellfire club for manipulating her for her powers and she went back shit crazy kicked the shit out of the hellfire club and then kicked the shit out of the x-men as well and then started going to space the x-men go to fucking get her ass because she's fucking family and the x-men fucking love her and what happens is is the shiar empire which is gladiator and princess lelandra and deathbird and all those motherfuckers out there the shiar empire they know the phoenix force destroys fucking planets so 
They don't give a fuck who has the Phoenix Force. They want them dead. And what happens is the Shi'ar Empire actually kills Jean Grey by incinerating her with one of their, like, ship weapons right in front of Cyclops' eyes. And they were, like, in love together. And shit was epic. Not gonna lie. Now, this movie... All right, now, hold on. So, saying all that... Yeah. Say again what you think about this movie. Amazing. Because people are going to say, oh, you just don't know or whatever. Like, th this is something that's near and dear to your heart. Like, Amazing. Batman. Amazing. Listen, they got some They got some things wrong. This movie is not perfect, but none of these fucking movies are perfect. And but game. you know what? The things, um, the things that they got wrong in this movie, yeah. to me, make sense yes. to the events of the movie. Absolutely. T listen, to tell the Dark Phoenix saga as written by Chris Claremont, it requires way more backstory than they can do in two hours. Right. Okay? You can't explain the Shi'ar Empire and their want and need. You can't bring the Hellfire Club into it and do that whole side story. Plus, this this is really dark along those lines. <clears throat> and, and we got to remember, too, that Fox didn't take this turn till recently. Yeah. So Logan came out. Yeah. Is when they turned, well, actually Deadpool, right? Yeah. That's when they actually went, oh, we can do rated R, we can do darker things. Yes. Right? Um, one of the, like, for instance, this movie was really dark. One of the complaints I heard is, like, characters acting like what Beast does. Beast, you know, going to the other side, right? Yeah, basically. Basically turning on Professor X. Yes, because, uh, spoilers, spoilers, guys, Mystique dies at the hands of Jean Grey. Jean, right. Jean Grey has a moment when, uh, basically, guys, Jean Grey kills her parents when she's a little girl, or she thought she killed her parents. Yeah. Uh, turns out her father's been alive the whole time, but disowned her, wanted nothing to do with her. Charles Xavier, being being the, the professor that he is and wanting to make a home, a safe home for mutants and a place for them to develop their powers and become part of society, of course takes in Jean Grey, recognizes her gifts, and basically becomes uh, her, her caretaker, willingly and lovingly. Um, but he lies to Jean her entire life, says that your, your father died. Uh, to save her from the heartache of knowing that she wasn't wanted, right. you know, uh, good intentions, but either way, lying. So you look at that however you want. Um, right. But be, so 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 but so uh, basically, Mystique finds this shit out, and I guess because they need to give Jennifer Lawrence some fucking screen time or whatever the fuck it is, they they make her all righteous and shit and say, Charles, you're wrong for fucking lying to her and blah 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 like, blah. By the way, I hate. Yeah, I hate what they, the route they took with Mystique. I like villain Mystique. I like yeah. Rebecca Romaine Mystique way better than Jennifer Lawrence Mystique. I just like a villain Mystique. Way fucking better. Yeah, way, way better. fucking better. Um, but all Raven, Raven, Raven. Like, but whatever, it's fine. I'll take it. I'll take it. Whatever. And Beast, spoilers. I guess is in love with Mystique. They fell. They have a they, connection. They, they, they fell in love with each other. In, oh, no, in some I mean, weird they also, way, they, they have a connection. Yeah, they say they have a connection. I call it love, but either way, they, they are they are super duper close. So much to the point that when uh, Jean loses her shit, she discovers her dad. Her dad basically admits that, hey, I want nothing to do with you, and and the X Men come to get her because they know like. She's lost her shit because she did absorb the Phoenix Force from a space mission, which was true to the story. Right. Um, and um, <clears throat> and in doing so, fucking. Uh, Mystique is like, Jean, just come home, blah, blah. And Jean just can't control it. It's just too much power for her. She's fucking losing her shit. And in, in a rage, she just pushes Mystique away. Not with the intentions to kill her, but guess what? There was some debris around, and she ended up being impaled by stuff and, and died in front of everybody. First of all, yeah. in that moment, I was like, what the fuck? I mean, we knew she was going to die. I didn't know she was a Mystique? Yeah, I didn't know. I knew from the front day we showed we so we kinda saw in the previews. Oh, I didn't know. And then it was like talked about. Huh. I didn't think You didn't know. So you were like, What the fuck? Oh, your yeah. your initial like, reaction was like, Holy was shit. Like, what the fuck happened here? Yeah. I was like, this movie's gonna be different. Yeah. So Mystique gets killed. Uh before she gets killed, she had told uh Beast that she was basically leaving the X Men. She wanted to leave it and do her. She wanted to leave thing. the X Men, Professor X was going down the wrong path. Yeah, because listen, this takes place in nineteen ninety two and I guess Post X Men Apocalypse, the world, specifically the United States, has embraced the X Men and has, has embraced mutants and humans coexisting. And the X Men are now heroes in the eyes of the human race, which we all know if you follow the X Men is Professor X's MLK dream. You know, yeah. for mutants and humans to coexist. And and, and part of the reason is Mystique believes that. <clears throat> Professor X is getting a big. He wants the adulation, yes, and the adoration. And he's getting a big head. And is it basically? Is it because he wants mutants to be accepted amongst humans, or is it because he wants to be accepted amongst humans? Right. That's why. And and so Mystique basically tells Beast she's going to leave the X Men. Epic battle and epic 
fucking awesome battle outside with uh, Jean Grey's first encounter against the X Men. Kills Mystique. Kills Mystique. Kills Mystique. Quickly. Um, Beast after that goes insane. A wall. Yeah. Decides to team up with Magneto. Yep. Tells yep. Magneto that. She killed. Uh, well, that. well. Before that happens, Jean goes in search. Sure. She she can't find. She 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 doesn't know. Uh, she doesn't have a home with the X Men anymore. She feels abandoned by them and lied to because of her father. Yeah. So she can't go to her real dad. She can't go to the family that she grew up with. So she goes to the other people that that she's known in her lifetime. Magneto, which who, also love Genosha, who has found, uh, who, has, who was given sanctuary on an island, which we'll call it Genosha. Genosha. They didn't call it that, but, but that's yeah. what we're gonna call it. She goes yeah, there. This franchise would have kept going, dude. Oh, amazing! Yeah. Um, Do she, you know that the next movie would have been where they would have brought in the Sentinels? Could you imagine if they would have kept this tone? I mean, they did the Sentinels in Days of Future yeah, Past. Yeah, but like you know. Yeah. They had they they would have they would have had to bring them back. No. Something. Uh, either way, it was fucking good. All right. Like in the Gift of the Sentinel program is awesome. Is it really? Yeah. Nice. Um, Starts out with little drones. So, uh, Magneto, Genosha. Ma- Magneto Magneto, meets Miss, uh, uh, Jean Grey. She's got blood on her. He's like, whose blood is it? She doesn't say anything. And also really well written with Magneto. Like, he didn't straight up just accept her. Yeah. Yeah. He was like cautious. He's like, "What the fuck is yeah, this why, bitch doing yeah, here? Yeah, why are you here? Leave me yeah. the fuck alone." You know, I, I, and and she wanted to know how how he finds peace, how he doesn't hurt people, because, you know, he's n- notorious for fucking doing yeah. terroristic things. Um, and the whole time he's like, "This fucking bitch is crazy. Like, why would she have this? this? Is dumb." And it's proven to him when the military comes looking for her. And uh, unprovoked, she goes ballistic. She goes crazy. She starts fucking attacking the military, and basically goes on a one on one like. Like psychic metal battle with fucking with Magneto, Magneto with awesome, with a helicopter, yeah. and Magneto basically takes the helicopter, just fucking flings that shit <laughs> with all the. That was great. And then and then he's like, "You need to get the fuck out of here." And she leaves. So then she leaves, and while all that and while that's happening, Beast does everything like Juan said, and then Beast shows up on fucking Genosha to to be to be with Magneto and join him, and 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 he and he and Beast tells Magneto that guess what, fucking, you know. I'm here because because of fucking Raven, and he's like, "Oh, what? Raven sent you? Raven's dead." And he was yeah, like, "And Jean Grey killed." And Jean Grey, and he's like, "Fuck that!" He goes and gets his helmet. And, where he's like, "We're gonna kill this." Fucking and and, bitch. and Beast is the one when <laughs> when he has Beast. Well, what are you gonna do? He's like, "We need to kill her." Yeah. All right. Now, all that said is because one of the complaints I heard <clears throat> was that characters act not not like they're written, like the characters we know, and that is an example they gave me of characters. Of them being out of character, I, absolutely not. Like yeah. that reaction from Beast in that in that movie, the the tone of that movie and the and the events that happen in that movie <laughs> makes sense. They don't present Charles Xavier in this movie as this altruistic savior of fucking abandoned children. They present him as a man with faults that is unsure of himself, that is cocky, that will not admit fault. That that basically there is one point in the movie where Beast is begging him to just say sorry, right? And Charles Xavier is won't even do that. See, but I agree with Chuck. I wouldn't have said sorry either. Like I would have taken Chuck's route. I wouldn't have told Jean that her father's a fucking asshole and wants nothing to do. There with comes her. a point where you need to tell her. I guess, yeah. And it always bites him in the ass. But she's like, she, listen, she's you, so unstable. She's been unstable her entire life. Yeah, even but, even before the Phoenix Force, she was you know, unsure but, you, of herself. You know, then you have to you have to allow her to deal. You have to deal with those issues when they come, and not risk what happened. Yeah. But but here's the whole point. Like Beast is broken. Charles is a fucking mind reader. Yeah. Like all he has to say is, "Look, I'm sorry." He just lost Mystique, even if Charles doesn't mean it. But Char- like they, the way that this movie wrote Charles, yeah. is in- is incredible. Yeah, right. Which, which so, by the way, James McAvoy, fabulous fucking job. And in this From movie, the he, th- this is the best though. This is the best he's been. Yes, absolutely. Best, this is not the best Fastbender had, was. No, but he right? was still great. Yeah, it, Days of Future Past was the best Magneto will ever see. He was good in first class too. He was good, but Days yeah. of Future Past when he lifts that fucking stadium. Yeah. Whew. But this is the best we've seen Professor a- McAvoy as Professor X. Yeah. And I think <clears throat> it's because he plays a broke like he plays Charles that way. Yeah. Like he this isn't like the guy that we need to trust. This is a guy that Charles is has ulterior motives even, right? Yeah. Um, so it totally makes sense that Beast, this guy he looked up to, all of a sudden he's like, dude, this is a cocky, self-righteous, out-for-himself guy, and he doesn't care about my friend. Well, I'm going to get revenge. So I do think that Beast is in character. Yeah. 
um, Nightcrawler was another one. That he's like, oh, Nightcrawler is always the same. He's always looking for the good in people. He broke. Yeah. Like he broke. Yeah. And and the reason he breaks is it, I, I thought it was awesome. Like I thought it was great in that whole scene. So I think I think people are fucking idiots. They are, of course they're fucking idiots. But they like Professor Hulk. Go suck a dick. Yeah, but like yeah, yeah. yeah. Fucking um, all the while while this is happening, an alien race has came to Earth because they detected the Phoenix Force. We don't know who the fuck it is, by the way. They explained who it was in some subtitles, what their name of their thing, but I've never oh, heard of it before. Yeah, they, you, that, you, you passed out for a second. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one, one, it always happens, guys. I, I fall asleep yeah. in every movie. Um, and uh, I was really hoping they would be the brood. Two for a second there, I thought it was a scroll. Because they're shapeshifters, guys. Hold on. Do you think it was maybe a dig at first? You think maybe they were like... You think that you? Oh, you think they meant to do shapeshifters? That they maybe meant to do scrolls, but because of then everything that happened with Captain DVD Marvel, they I couldn't do it. Marvel, yeah. Do scrolls. It's possible. Because that ha- that was scrolls. I'm sorry, there were scrolls. You think they were scrolls? I mean, other than them like <clears throat> looking like fucking aliens, not like scrolls. Yeah. But like, everything about them was scrolls. It was very scrollish for sure. And them looking for did. a new planet and to take over the planet. And listen, they were and evil. They were, they were evil as fuck, guys. Yeah, they were. They, they were, they were everything the scrolls should have fucking been listen, in Captain Marvel. They're they're super evil. Yes. They're shapeshifters, like yes. In the way that they, they take over the people, right? Their planet was destroyed, and they were looking to invade Earth and turn this into their planet. Yes. They were fucking scrolls. I love it. The green. They were the dude. When I saw them and, and just saw that green, that weird like vomit green, they're fucking scrolls. Yeah. And that's the way they should have fucking been in it Captain been Marvel, scro- Kevin dude, Feige. Listen, how awesome would it have been if they wore scrolls though? I would have. If I, they did it. Oh my god. Um, I, I would have been like. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Kevin Feige, you this this you fucked up been the, the scrolls. scrolls. Look how great <laughs> they could have been. Good villains. Yeah, but you fucked up. You had to make them political refugees seeking asylum. Yeah. Whatever. Anyways. We're not going to talk about that shit fucking movie. Back to the good fucking female-led movie, Dark Phoenix, okay? Yeah. All right, so... This shit was female-led. It was, absolutely. They even made a little joke yeah, about I mean, saying, saying the ex-women. Sex, ex-women because it's girls saving ass instead yeah. of... Yeah. Oh. Um, but, um, so th- this alien race is looking for the Phoenix Forest. They find Jean Grey eventually, and... They bring her to a place, it's kind of like the Hellfire Club, the way it looks and the way it feels. Yeah. It's in New York, just like it was in the comic. Like yeah, That actress <clears throat> could have 100% been in the Hellfire Club. Yeah, she looked like, she looked White, White Queen, yeah, like White you Queen, know. Yeah. The problem is they couldn't do White Queen, they couldn't do Sebastian Shaw because they killed him in first class. Yeah. You know what I mean, all that stuff like that. But it had be- so many undertones of the Hellfire Club, mm-hmm. and it was her trying to manipulate Gene, just the way Mastermind was trying to manipulate Gene at the Hellfire yeah. Club. You know, so l- lots of similar things happening from the comic like, well to the movie. Well done. Yes, without it totally calling it the Hellfire fucking club. So they're there, and Magneto fucking shows up with his goons, and at the same time, Professor X shows up with Storm, Cyclops, and fucking Nightcrawler, and they have a battle fucking royale out in the streets in New York. Awesome. Brutal. Like, listen, let me tell you what, guys. I have never seen these X-Men characters ever fight on screen as good as I have in this fucking movie. If you're a fan of Cyclops, you will see him unload like you've never seen him unload before. A fan of Storm, you will see her fucking kick ass. Beast, kick ass. Even Magneto did some crazy fucking shit in this fucking And, and let me tell you the, the coolest thing about this movie is they fought as a team, right? Yeah. And what I mean is, so you'll, you'll have a part where, where like, let's say Beast was out muscling, like, Cyclops, right? And, and Professor X was having his own battle, and he would notice, and he'd for a second stop and, like, help him in some way. Yeah. And they did that constantly throughout the movie. They were always looking out for each other in little ways that they could help each other. Yes. Where, whether there was Storm or then Beast or, or even Nightcrawler. It was awesome. The the way they did the team dynamics within the battle was great. And Cyclops is my favorite X-Men character, as some of you guys know. Um, if you don't know, he's he's my favorite X-Men character. First of all, they did a great job with Cyclops. They Earlier in the movie, we didn't say this, they used him as like a cannon on the fucking Blackbird jet. Yeah. Like They're like, Cyclops, go fucking shoot this thing. And they're in space. They're like, how the fuck are they going to yeah, do that? Yeah, the whole time I'm like, dude, they're, they're, yeah. this is going to ruin the movie. Yeah. It's going to be some shit. They go thing. down. He, he puts his eyes in this fucking like goggle thing. 
and he shoots through it, and it fucking amplifies its power and shoots it out like a fucking cannon. Amazing. How amazing was that? Amazing. And then in New York, when he fucking confronts Magneto, they're talking like she's got to fucking Jean's got to die. Cyclops just said. If you hurt her, I'll fucking kill you. I was like, Great. yes. Great. Yes. Show me the fucking ballsy leader that, that I fucking love that's fucking Cyclops. Yeah. Hello? No, yeah, it was <clears> great. <throat> um, so, yeah, it fucking, fucking amazing. Anyway, so Magneto ex- actually ends up confronting Gene. That's when we see that scene that we see in the previews where his helmet gets crushed and then it explodes and all that shit like that. Um, and... Uh, and she gives some of her power to this scroll alien like person because she just doesn't want it. She 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 didn't ask for any of this stuff and she just right. feels tortured and pulled and she wants nothing to do with it. Right. So she gives it away, but then Professor X is there and the fucking scroll lady makes him get out of his chair and, and fucking walk. makes him oh, walk God, up the stairs bru- as cr- No, Jean Grey does that. Is it Jean that does that? She does that. She does it. Because that was brutal. Crushes his fucking chair and you're just like what the fuck is going on? I couldn't on? believe it. That was fucking like, brutal. What the fuck? Yeah. And 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 then Professor X realizes that this alien is here to fucking take over the planet and kill everyone. No. And he convinces Gene that hey, listen, I'm I I'm sorry I hurt you, but I've been on your side the entire right. fucking time. She looks inside his mind and sees like, guess what? Was he wrong for lying or yeah, but he did it out of love. He did it to protect her. He did it because he ultimately gives a fuck. He cares about this this girl and he wants her to succeed at life and be a good upstanding mutant overall human being yeah you know so hold on but speaking about that moment because that that had one of my like favorite little james mcavoy moments as professor x right i don't know if you noticed but like every time professor x like it happened twice in the movie this was one of the parts so he's like talking to gene and he realized the other woman there and you can tell that he's using his mind power he's just like talking and then he's like what the fuck are you like yeah that little that was Awesome. Yeah. I loved him as Professor X. Yes. So that little moment of realization where this woman's blocking his mind, not something, like, he acts it out. It was great. James yeah. McAvoy, you're awesome. And he knows that, like, yeah. like she's not human. Yeah. And he's like... But uh, the, the moment of realization, you can see him act it out. Like, yeah. It was great. Yes. Very good. So Jean comes around, and she, she detaches from the lady, and fucking... And Cyclops comes in, fucking blows that bitch fucking through the fucking <laughs> roof. You know what I mean? And... And then, so they're getting ready to all fucking, like, get the fuck out. But all the while, the government shows up. Yeah. And they show up with their fucking guns, with their fucking immunization fucking darts, which we've seen in past movies. Yeah. That, that take away your powers uh, temporarily. And then they put the fucking collar p- power inhibitors on the fu- and on drag every them of them. And like drag dogs. them all the fuck out. Same. So we see the fucking collars on these motherfuckers. The same collars we saw in Days and Future Past that we've seen in Genosha and the cartoon. Yeah. All this shit. Fucking great. They go on this fucking train because they're going to this fucking, you know, detention facility, we assume. We never yeah. see the detention facility. And while they're there, these fucking scrawl aliens show up on the fucking train and they're fucking powerful as fuck. Mm-hmm. And they're crawling on this thing like fucking bugs, going in super strong, taking out these soldiers one by one. And the X-Men are like, look, listen, fucking let us out so we can help you. Finally, all the soldiers get the shit kicked out of him. There's one left. And he's like, fuck this shit. And he yeah. fucking lets them all go. As soon as that happens, gloves were fucking off. And that's when you see the best X-Men you've ever fucking scene in your entire life. Not just the X-Men, but the Brotherhood of Mutants are fucking there too. They're fighting side by side against these aliens, and we see them do crazy shit. Magneto does shit with his powers that I don't think we've ever truly really seen him fucking let loose and kill motherfuckers the way he did in this fucking movie. Storm fucking does insane lightning shit, like and we've always seen her do, even Halle Berry did lightning shit. This is on another fucking level. Nightcrawler fucking... So, and, and that's 100% the best part of the fights was Nightcrawler unleashed. Yeah, Nightcrawler loses his shit stabbing motherfuckers with his fucking tail. Yeah. Okay? Cyclops... Wait, that's not even... How about when Nightcrawler fucking bamps the fucking scroll into the front of the fucking train, and then oncoming the, train, and then the train, and he that smiled. Was brutal, yeah, he smiled. Brutal. And then, and then, and then, and then, and then the train fucking hit. It was, it was, it was and Cyclops throws the fuck down too. Yeah. Like, like it is unrelenting, fucking just defending their fucking lives, and 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 they don't hold back at 
all the fucking one girl that was like the the right hand of Magneto yeah. got killed nasty style yeah, in that. Yeah. How about the dude with the dreads? I don't know who the fuck he that also was. Got killed. But yeah. Yeah, I feel like they probably didn't use any major characters from Brotherhood because they they knew these characters were gonna die. Yeah. And I'm sure they weren't expecting the to, sale. They were probably thinking we're gonna make a million X Men movies. Yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, but I mean, Fastbender's still kind of young, so he could have been Magneto for longer. Ian McKellen was Magneto when he was like 70 yeah. or some yeah. shit like that. So, yeah, of course. Um, and so Gene's fucking still like unconscious, tied up, shit like that, whatever the fuck it is. And Professor X is trying to like wake her the fuck up because the, the blonde white queen looking lady, mm-hmm. uh, Scrawl, is is... Super powerful. She has a part of the Phoenix Force in there, so yeah. it doesn't matter who comes at her. Nobody can beat her. There's a scene where Magneto points every single fucking gun at her oh, so and good. just fucking unloads, unloads on this fucking girl with everything. And she, you see her get chipped away, but she comes back together and fucking just really just pushes into the side. Finally, Jean wakes up. You know, she accepts Professor X's apology. You know, and then her and this girl just fucking go at it. Well, first. <clears throat> She kills all the other aliens, almost all the other aliens. Almost all of them. By, like, twisting all the fucking trains in there and, like, yeah. protects in Magneto. Yes. And, and the X-Men. Protects everyone, yeah. Uh, then lands, and then before the White Queen scroll fights her, <clears throat> she basically starts disintegrating people, other yeah. aliens. Like, insane, just like... I will say this, very similar to the way Jean disintegrated people in X-Men Last Stand. Ah. You remember at the end of that, she was just, and people were just yeah. kind of like, okay. it, it was almost like the snap disintegrating. It could have been a throwback. Yeah, but the same way, they kind of just like withered away into dust. And then know? the final battle happens. Yep. Um, and in order for Jean to kill the the White Queen scroll. Well, Jean gets stabbed. We think she's dead for a second. Like someone stabbed her, but right. she's, she's a fuck, she's the Phoenix she's, Force. Yeah. So she fucking heals Basically up and kills the motherfucker. White Queen and and realize if she kills White Queen, she was gonna kill her friend. So launches herself into space. Yeah. Explodes the fuck out of that bitch. Yeah. All you see is a phoenix in the sky. Movie. Yep. And 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 then uh, and then w- the movie wants you to believe that Jean is gray, dead. But she's not. Yeah. She she goes to a narration thing where she basically right. says that she's transcended beyond the earth and she's something bigger than yeah. that now. Right. She's a cosmic being. Right. Which is what the Phoenix Force is. It makes sense. And I think we, you know, we all like Jean Grey when she's like that. At least I do. Mm. Um, Professor X, quote unquote, retires from the X Men. He's living in Paris now, I guess. Yeah. They changed the name of the school to the Jean Grey School for Gifted Youngsters. Right. And it shows the X Men are living in peace in Westchester Beast County. Is, Beast is the uh, director Be- Beast, now. Beast is now the Which headmaster. Makes sense. Yeah. And, uh,. And it's just fucking great. We see Shadow Cat briefly run through walls. I don't know if you yeah. caught that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Dazzler, by the way, was in the, we didn't even mention Dazzler that. Dazzler was at a party. Dazzler was at a party. She looked great. It was she, a 70s outfit. Awesome. Awesome. Which great. is, Dazzler made her first appearance in Dark Phoenix Saga, guys. Like, for all you motherfuckers that want to say that this didn't serve Chris Claremont's story justice, go suck a dick. There was the Hellfire Club. There was the fucking shapeshifters that posed as the fucking people manipulating her mind. Dazzler was fucking in it. There was a space shuttle, which is how she got her fucking powers. Just go fuck off, all right? They did a great job. And anyways, Magneto goes to see Charles to play chess with him. Yeah. And just a friendly game. Nothing more came out of it. It was just them playing chess. And then the, it panned up to the par- Parisian sky and sh- it showed like a Phoenix flare, which rem- reminded me a lot of uh, of uh, Star Trek Generations, mm-hmm. that, that flare that would fly through sure. and take Picard and Kirk into the other end. But either way, and that's how the movie ended. There was no pre- post credit scene because obviously Disney took that shit over. The uh, movie was written and directed by Simon uh, Kimberg, I think his name was. The guy did uh, Logan. The guy did Logan. Uh, Logan. Logan, sorry. And uh, he was also a writer on Days and Future Past, I heard, too. I think so. Yeah. Uh, so, the movie's amazing, guys. I loved it. It's fucking great. It's it, like it's in my top three. It really is. You know? Uh, you know, it's up there with X2. It's up there with Logan. Like, it's that good. Everyone, it's up there with Days and Future Past. Everyone that says that it's... I'm, I'm- it's and, and I don't say this about a lot of movies. I, I really honestly don't like. I want to see it again. I know, right? Because there's a lot of stuff that now that I know it happens. Yeah. 
I'm going to be ready for. Because a lot of times I was like, holy shit, this is awesome. And we get caught by surprise. Uh, now I want I want to see that fight on the train again for all its glory, right? I want to see that fight in front of the house. All the fights. Let me tell you something. All the fights. I, I'll tell this this scene. This is why I love this movie, right? In the first fight, Quicksilver's there, does his Quicksilver shit, gets fucked up right away. Does not appear the rest of the movie. We don't see him again for the rest of the movie. Awesome. Yeah. Not well, we, at the very end, we see him walking around. Right, the end whatever. to let us know he lived. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I love Quicksilver. I love the way they did his powers. Yeah. Days of Future Past was amazing. Right. Um, if he would have been in this whole movie, it would have been great. But just the fact that they were really in a fuck people up like that. They killed, you know, they, they, they killed Mystique. They fucked up Quicksilver out of the fucking movie to the very fucking end, right? Like, that's what made this movie great. It was dark. It was gritty. It felt real. Like, there were consequences. Yes. Right? Um, after the Phoenix, she didn't bring Mystique back to fucking life. Like, there were actual consequences. And it changed everything. It was awesome. All the actors, like, nailed it. Um... I'm really, really fucking sad. I'm sad because this is the last time we're going to see McAvoy as Professor X and Fastbender as Magneto. Not just them, but the entire cast. It's the entire best. cast. It's the, it's it's probably. I don't the, like Turner. I don't. I don't like Jean Grey. You don't like Sophie Turner. I don't like Sophie Turner. That's Jean Grey. I don't. I'm sorry. You well, her versus Famke Jensen. The other Jean Grey. Ugh, yeah. I like Famke though. You do. I think she's all right. Over Sophie. Over. I don't like Sophie at all. Well, I think this is the best casting of... Definitely Best Storm. Best of, Storm we've ever seen. Best Storm we've ever seen. Uh, I, best Beast. And, you know, nothing best beast. Nothing against... What's his name? Uh, uh, Frasier. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Best no, Beast. No, this, this Beast was, was great. Uh, and I love Patrick Stewart, but I like McAvoy better, man. I know that's crazy. No, I'm fine with that. And I like Fassbender better than Ian McKellen. Yeah, I do too. And, 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 and I like... Is it James Madston who was Cyclops originally? Mm -hmm. I liked him, but he was written so poorly in the first three X Men movies. Yeah. I thought, and not really given the the role properly, that this kid did great. Yeah, this is whoever he is, and this Nightcrawler was great too. Nightcrawler was good. The, the casting is amazing, and you know what? I'm sad. I'm I'm not sad, but I'm, but but I'm annoyed that that people listen to things like Rotten Tomatoes and it sways them from giving a movie a chance like this. And there is no way Captain Marvel was better than this movie. No way. It's not. It's not. It's not even close to being better. And it ranks way better. Yes. Yes. That is ridiculous. I think it's political reasons, but whatever. Aside from that, either way, Captain Marvel is fucking garbage because it has no villain. And and the way the scrolls should have been, you see in this fucking movie, okay? Um, now, normally, I would be so upset about it that I wouldn't shut the fuck up about it because I'd be like, what does this mean for the future of X-Men movies? But the future of X-Men movies was already doomed before this movie came out because of the sale to Disney. Uh, the ending that we see in the theaters is not the original ending to this movie. I don't even know if we know what the ending was. Um, I, I, I hope they leak it. Um, but... Yes. But they, they, they did extensive reshoots and redid the ending entirely due to the Disney sale, I heard. Yeah. Um, that uh, makes me sad because it seems like this was going to be one of their dark... I think that they saw what happened with Logan. And after Logan, they're like, we want all our shit to be like Logan. Yeah. Because it works. Right. Which is why now that I see this movie, I'm really upset. Because if that's the direction they were actually going to go, holy shit. And now that makes me... <laughs> I'm fucking hope we get to see new mutants because they're gonna be that was gonna be a horror movie. But that but that one's got a ton of reshoots as well. Oh, you fucking know? Disney, bro. And and you wanna know a little fun fact? We're in June of 2019 right now. I found this out. This movie finished shooting two summers ago. Did you know that? Well, no, yeah, no. And, but they've been pushing it back so much. Same thing with new mutants. New mutants was supposed to come out last year. You know, uh, this movie was supposed to come out around. Uh, uh, Valentine's Day. No. But they decided to give that to Alita Battle Angel and put this out later. You know? Um, so, and at the same time, too, everyone had a bad taste in their mouth about X-Men Apocalypse because I think we can all agree that's probably one of the, the lesser good X-Men movies. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the hype just wasn't there. And, 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 you know, it's unfortunate because this movie made so little money Yeah, that Disney's going to look at it and be like, no, nah, man, people want happy X-Men. I know. We're fucked. We are fucked. 
this was the closest we're ever ever going to get to an X-Men I wanted to see. Yeah. A dark, gritty, fucked up, ruthless X-Men world. Yeah, I know. I know. Which in the end, that's what the X-Men is. Like, Days of Future Past, that's the future of mutant kind. Yeah. Right? It's bad. It's, it's not going to work. Yeah. It's not going to work out. Yeah. You know, all the best X-Men story ends with the destruction of the good X-Men. Yeah. Age of Apocalypse. It's all, every time the X-Men is the best where I've read it, it's always been with the darker, grittier storylines. Onslaught, when Professor X became sure. the fucking bad guy and fucking destroyed so much shit. So, you know, I think that X-Men lends itself to that. Fatal right? Fatal Attractions, when Magneto literally rips the rips metal out from Wolverine's gun. Yeah. You'll never see that on the fucking screen. Never. Maybe we would have. Yeah. You want to know why you never see going. it? Because it's fucking traumatizing yeah. to see that. To see and, a man's and, and skeleton so ripped from him. If you look at all the best X-Men stories, it's when it's at the, their darkest. Yeah. Um, this is why I like this movie so much. I felt it was like actually truer than the comics that most people are giving it credit for, even in tone. Yeah. Right? And uh, and that makes me really sad. I'm, I'm, I'm sad for X-Men now. I don't believe... I believe that if this was the direction it was going into, like... I would have been super excited for the next X-Men movie. Yeah. But now that it's Disney, it's five years away minimum. Yeah, we're not going to see the X-Men for a while. This sucks, guys. Yeah. Trust me. This this movie is getting a lot of shit it does not deserve. There's no way that there's any superhero movie I've seen recently that's actually better than X-Men. Maybe since Infinity War. I thought you liked Endgame better. Now you're thinking about that. Well, shit. there were, there were, you know, after I was See, talking about it, yeah. right? Like, yeah. And, and there were moments in Endgame. Thank you. Okay, so there were moments in Endgame that I thought were way better. Like oh. nothing in this movie compares to to fucking Captain America, Captain Thor. Yes, agreed. nothing. Agreed. Yes. Right. So there were set action pieces. But the movie as a whole. But the movie as a whole, no, this is better. Yeah. And and, and people that said like the, the villains that don't no they do explain they were coming to take over our or there it's the scrolls it's the scrolls that's yeah. what it is. Right, they lost their homeworld. The Phoenix Force destroyed it, and they're coming here to wipe us out and rebuild this world in their homeworld image. Yeah, absolutely. What's so confusing? It's great. It's great. And on another side note about people talking shit, someone said that they changed powers, like Nightcrawler to Night for Nightcrawler to teleport. He used to see where he's going. Or I saw every place he was going. Yes, and, and when he didn't, it's because Professor X showed it to him in his mind. Exactly. So all you people that no. say otherwise, go fuck off. Whatever. Anyways. Um. Final thing, uh, I do want to mention this. Uh, I thought it was a huge missed opportunity. Is they should have shown the reverse of that Deadpool scene. What reverse? Remember when Deadpool in in the Deadpool two movie, where he's like walking down the hall and he opens the door and Professor X and all the X Men are there. Oh, that was great! Close the door. Yeah. Like how awesome would it have been if they were in like the in like their office? Even though it would have been, so it would have been. Uh, yes. It would have been out of tone for the movie. Yeah, yeah. Only it wouldn't have made sense because it would have been a comedic moment. Yes. But it would have made sense because it was it would have been a window into Deadpool's world. So you there would have been in a meeting. The door would have opened. There would have been Deadpool and Colossus. Well. Would have been awesome. Time out though. This movie takes place in 1992. Oh, never mind. Yes. You're right. You're right. Never mind. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. That's yeah. That still would have been right. fun though. though. That would have been cool. Yes, that would have been great. But we'll never see that, guys. Uh, the future of the X Men is in the hands of Kevin Feige, Disney, and the world of PG-13. No, I'm not gonna say it's bad. I'm not gonna say <clears throat> Kevin. You know, Kevin Feige, because people were freaking out about this, right? Um, because this. Let's be honest. Like the sale of this happened. Not very long after Logan. Yeah. And Logan was a huge critical success. Yeah. Right? So one of the first things everyone freaked the fuck out about, two things, was, are you going to fuck up Deadpool? Yep. Right? Uh, Deadpool 2 hadn't been out yet. Are you going to fuck up Deadpool and, like, look at Logan? And Feige said, no. We're going to keep that tone. I don't believe it. Yeah, I don't believe it either, guys. I don't believe it because... <laughs> He's going to do whatever what, he wants, first of all. We saw what Feige did to the scrolls. We see what Feige has done to Captain Marvel. We see where Feige's head is at. He basically came out and said, I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want to, and if fans don't like it, fuck them. And we gave him the power to do that because we spent $1.7 billion on a shit movie. Oh, God, I'm depressed now. I was feeling good because I'm like, this movie's amazing. But and, we, empower, and that, we empowered I, Kevin. <clears throat> Kevin Feige has power, dude. Oh, of course, dude. He has huge power. Like, the amount of money he has made. Yeah. Like, what? Like, six of the top ten movies he's in history he's responsible for? I know, right? He's going to do whatever the fuck he wants. For the rest of his life, yeah. There, could, there might never be a villain again. Well, 
It might be Donald Trump every fucking movie. This is crazy, man. So I'm I'm, I'm not hopeful for the future of X Men. I think Kevin Feige is going to take the X Men, and God knows we'll see. But I, I I don't know. He they were saying that they were that he might not even do a Team X Men movie. That he might just do like single movies like Storm. Um, whatever, man. Oh God, I'm kind of annoyed right now. I'm super annoyed, dude. You didn't think about this? Ugh. I mean, listen. I was never a fan of the of the Disney Fox merger. I'm a fan of competition and versus monopolies. And Disney literally has a monopoly. It's just the, the, the thing is that Disney produces quality, right? But the thing is, they produce quality like <clears throat> when when it's when it's a lot of no name people, right? Look, man, if I got too much power, if you look at the movies that started, all my favorite movies from Marvel are Captain America: Winter Soldier and before. Yeah, all of them. Yeah. Right, uh, I don't know if Guardians was before Winter Soldier. I, I think it was after. Oh, so Guardians yeah. was fine too, right? Yeah, yeah. But you can slowly see as Kevin Feige has gotten more and more power, his movies have changed. Ooh. Right, Lo- Captain lots Marvel. Lots of political correctness. Right. Lots of lots of political undertones. Uh, safe humor. Sa- yes, like, safe humor. You look yes. at Captain Marvel. You yes. look at Black Panther. You look at Ant Man two. You look at, um, you know, Thor 3. Like, those are different movies from Iron Man 1, you know, Captain America, Winter Soldier, Guardians of the Galaxy. Like, the Marvel is going into, like, some sterilized... Um, all inclu- and inclusion is great. I don't give a fuck, yeah. right? But it's, like I That's said, my, my focus, complaint, though. it wasn't organic. It's yeah. not organic, right? And it's, it's like, this weird, like, vanilla... I, I don't know what it's... I'm not liking the direction that Marvel's going into. When you take X Men, which is political in nature, right? Uh, it's it, and and you stick it. To- Listen, the X Men, Stanley and Jack Kirby created the X Men in a response to the civil rights movement. That that was it, it. Came out in the '60s, and that that was Stan Lee's and Jack Kirby's way of addressing what was happening socially and politically in our nation during that time. And 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 Charles Xavier. Is is the is the fictional Martin Luther King in the Marvel universe? Right. You know. So as opposed to you know Magneto being the Malcolm X. Yes. Um. And and that that was. And here's so, another here's another so thing too, guys. Uh, this, the, dude, I'm just oh, this is awful. Man. I know now. This has totally changed. Because he's gonna right? he's gonna because he's gonna sterilize this. Yes. X Men's gonna. What are we gonna get? Not this fan movie. service. That's not all this, we're gonna yeah, not this get. movie. Yeah. Right, you're gonna have like Hugh Jackman winking at us. Yeah. Listen, guys, let me tell you something. Dude. Back to comics, real quick. In Marvel Comics, the X Men universe, in a weird fucking way, operates outside of all the other Marvel comics. Right. Uh, they're there. They participate in the big events when needed. They keep them separate. But for the most part, they do their own thing. Don't get me wrong. You have Wolverine joining the Avengers once in a while, or make an appearance, or right, Spider-Man pop shit, but in. It's mostly, it's but for mostly the most part, separate. And that's the way fans, at least in the comic verse, like it, because it is a different tone. What happens in the X-Men world works well in the X-Men world, and it doesn't work well in Avengers. It what happens doesn't. in Avengers doesn't work well in Uncanny X-Men. You know? Um, right. I mean, the closest they ever got to it was Civil War. And even then, it was like... It was the Avengers got close to it, was doing like Civil War. They did AVX to Avengers vs. X-Men, which was, yeah. was okay. But yeah. it, but again, it's, you know, it's 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 it just... I don't know. We'll Could see. you just imagine like Wolverine interacting with Thor? No. I don't like it at but all. But like think of this Thor, this particular Thor we got from Watiti. Cocky Thor? No, this, Cocky this comedic. comedy, like yeah. fucking fat Thor, yeah. like interacting with Wolverine after what we just saw. Awful. And wo- and Wolverine that we kn- the Wolverine that we know would tell him to fuck off and gut him, yeah. you know, which we'll never see. Awful. <clears throat> yeah. There you go. Um. So we'll see what happens in the X Men universe. I don't. I don't know. I don't have high hopes, man. I. I. To be honest, I. I believe that. Uh, I mean, personally, as a fan, I could see that. Uh, the the end of my love for for the Marvel universe. It's been a while since I've actually loved. A Marvel Universe movie. I think the Infinity last time. Infinity War was great. Um, I did like Infinity War. I had Infinity my problems War with it, though. Yeah, a lot yeah. of problems with it, you know? Yeah. Um, I think the last one was basically Civil War. I thought was great. 
uh, the Captain America Civil War, but I thought all the Captain America movies were really, really Great. good. Fabulous. But ever since then, man, I've had a problem with all of it. Like Thor, I had a problem with. Like, uh, I mean, listen, guys, here's here's the deal. We could we could shit on Disney and Kevin Feige all we want right now, and of course, we're we're a part of a very but, small but, minority. But the thing, for, Steve, is that we, a, we can we can tell his we can hear his voice pushing through now. Yes. Yes. And I don't like the direction it's going. Like, it's I, also I it's, it's predictable too. Like, we're we're like. With the exception of the, I didn't, I didn't see the scrolls being what they were, and that totally ruined life for me. But anyways, the, here, here's the thing, guys. At the end of the day, though, I really think audiences are to blame. You have the X Men who have taken a dark turn, a rated R turn, a lot of times, mm -hmm. and then you got the DC universe, which has had its mishaps. I'm not defending the things that they fucked up on, but obviously, um, Zack Snyder and and Warner Brothers really wanted to give a different look at superheroes than what Marvel was giving, which was the lighter side of things. And, you know, yes, Justice League was a disaster. They fucking canceled Swamp Thing after one episode, dude. I know. And, and listen, listen, the DC Universe apps are a total fucking dark fucking look at superheroes. It's rated R to the max. But audiences just are not embracing it. They're not embracing things like Dark Phoenix. They're not embracing things like a horror New Mutants. They're not calling for that. Um, they, they really weren't embracing, you know, uh, what Zack Snyder was trying to do with the DC Universe. I mean, if you read what his original plans were for awesome. Justice League, it was, awesome. it was fucking insane. Yeah. It was basically injustice, dude. Yeah. It was like on, but, a, on but, another but, fucking but level. Because they want, prof they want Professor Hulk. Uh, uh, and they want fat Thor. Like, ha, yeah. ha, ha, look, Thor's fat. So, audiences, you are to blame for the future of our comic movies. And uh, and and the lack of variety in storytelling and, and perspective. I, that, that's how I look at it. It's a little strong. We came on strong on this review. Wow, we really did. This was, <laughs> we chastised people. I, I know. Well, whatever. And listen, I don't want to be a hypocrite. I like the Marvel movies. And I'll still go watch them. You know? But When's I just the last time you were excited for a Marvel movie though, man. I want to see Spider Man, I'm not gonna lie. I, uh, but it's a Sony movie technically. It's like whatever. Yeah. Whatever. But the 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 thing is this the, the, we're losing variety. We're losing options, you know? War Warner Brothers clearly is trying to steer more in the Marvel direction, as we saw with Aquaman and Shazam, you know? And uh and we're losing it with we, we lost it with Fox. Cause because they got bought out. You know, we lost the Netflix shows, which were the gritty Marvel stuff. No. And now we're going to get Disney Plus, which we're going to watch the fuck out of those shows. And hopefully, hopefully we're wrong. We're going to get a funny Logie show and Howard the Duck the Cartoon, man. Yeah, so there you guys go. Right, but man. either way, look, let's go full circle. Dark Phoenix is amazing. Don't listen really, to Rotten really Tomatoes. Good. Don't listen to reviews. And for all you haters out there that want to criticize the, the source material, please, let's debate it anytime you want. Because... Or just watch this review because I think I proved my point with Wonski right here. Uh, For the first time, we like passionately agree about it. I know we really do. Wow, this, this year is, at least this, it's been a while. This is odd. This is no, odd. But we actually agreed on on Godzilla also. So yeah, guys, yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. Either. Watch Dark Phoenix, guys. It's actually a lot better. Yeah. Um. I mean, you can find faults with it. I'm not going to criticize people for finding faults. Like, I guess if, you know, like, everyone's a right to their own opinion. But I think as a whole, like, the movie makes sense. I think it's really, really good. I think the storyline's fine. We've seen some of the coolest shit that X-Men's ever done. We've seen some of the best performances uh, from so, as some of these X-Men characters. We're never going to see that stuff again. Um. We should see it at least. Let our voice, Don't let this be the lowest money-making X-Men ever because then Disney is going to make fucking fat. Happy Thor, X Fat Thor X Men forever. Yes, and it's, exactly. And we're gonna get a Deadpool movie the, the way we love it because because Bob Iger and and fucking uh, Kevin Feige knows that it makes money. So they're gonna keep the Ryan Reynolds format going because they know they can make money off of it. But if Dark Phoenix doesn't turn a profit, if it doesn't come around, which I don't think it's going to, but it's just not gonna happen. And Logan, unfortunately, is is an is an oddball. They'll just in the consider bunch. an outlier. Yeah, exactly. So. It's not just gonna happen, but oh well. What are you guys gonna do? Watch Dark Phoenix. So it was fucking amazing. That's it, right? No. For Tom Pop, Future Five Mail Boy, I'm Stephen Corker. One. Later.